Well, so far as I'm concerned, no Rose Show would be complete without consulting our resident expert, Professor Paul Mitchell from OSU's Hort Department and oh, former Oklahoma Gardening Post. Oh, my goodness. Post. Thank you so much, Susan. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Well, we do have some roses here that are reasonably resistant, and these are some of David Austin's English roses. Oh, this particular that. one is called Graham Thomas, and you'll notice that it's almost thornless. That's beautiful. And this is beautiful foliage, and this is foliage that is developed in the late summer here that has very little black spot, and even those leaves that are affected with black spot have held on pretty well. So that's one of the important things about these roses. They can have a little black spot, and it doesn't defoliate them as mm -hmm. it does some of our hybrid teas. Now, these are the English roses. These are English roses, okay. and this, of course, is Graham Thomas. Right. And we're going to go over here and look at a white one and a moss rose, too, that is resistant. But the moss roses don't flower, you know, mm -hmm. consistently for us. Just and this, sort of off and on. Through the... Yeah, a little bit off and on, mm -hmm. and primarily in the spring. Okay. Now, this is white uh, swan, and swan has uh, just about finished up. I don't think it's going to flower again this year. But isn't that beautiful foliage? It's lovely, and uh, we want to mention that Professor Mitchell's backyard is a real test of disease resistance. He purposely does not spray, yes. and that way he knows which roses That's are right. truly disease resistant in Oklahoma. Absolutely. No sprays have been put on these right. pesticides of any kind or fungicides. Well, they sure look good for the rainy weather we've had oh, this absolutely. summer. Oh, absolutely. That's great. Now, and this is the one you say not that you should plant under your daughter's bedroom yes, window, right? Yes, that's right. right. <laughs> this thorny rascal here. This is a moss rose. And this is white chalet. And if you'll notice, the leaves have been attacked a little. They don't look just super good, but they're still hanging on. Mm -hmm. And that's they an really important are. factor, you know, in getting a rose that you don't have to mollycoddle too much. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to look at Othello, which I think you've already got a hold of. Oh, yeah. And it has these exotic buds on it. I think that's and just it, incredible. Oh, that, that's yes. a bud right there. But that look at is those. a bud and almost a flower of leaves. Well, it really is. And isn't it? Othello has, has its share of black spot, but no great amount of it. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, fully double dark red flower. Oh, yeah. In fact, there's a bud right down here. Yes, you we can see a little bit of the color. Camera. That's going to be mm -hmm. a deep. Oh, yeah. And it looks like it's going to be a double. It is. It's mm -hmm. fully double. It's fully double. Beautiful. And whenever it's uh, doing well in the summer, these will be four inches or more across, and just as full of petals as you could possibly ever hope for. They do open up somewhat in, you know, when they're fully open, mm -hmm. but it's still quite lovely. Mm. And this climber under here, if you'll notice, has almost no black spot. And this flowers primarily in the spring. It's a coral-colored flower, and it is Jura Van Ville. Jura Van Ville. Now, yeah, Jura the, Van Ville. Um, the climbers in general, you have another one that's along a fence. Uh, yes, that I do. Is, that's um, Carl Drewski. It's not really a climber, but it's a shrub rose that I pruned up that way, you know. Okay. And it's, it's a lovely white and it always flowers for Mother's Day. And then I've also got that interesting red rose that nobody seems to know anything about that we can't find the name of anywhere that has absolutely nothing on it. It makes a head of flowers in clusters. It's a typical Floribunda, but I wish we knew what it was so we could say this is the rose for Oklahoma. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful one, and, and you're right, there's not a bit of black spot on it. Full color, and here it is late October, and it's in full bloom, looking gorgeous. And I'm amazed because it's against a stockade fence, which you say, don't it, don't put a rose That's against right. a privacy fence. That's right. It's by a, a wall. wall, and then a tool shed on the other side, side totally closed in. So it gets no very little spot. direct sunlight. Yeah. So there, yeah. there's evidence that if you look around your yard and other people's yards and pay attention, you can find roses that are black spot resistant, require no maintenance so far as spraying goes, and still really enjoy them. That's right. Yeah. Well, Paul, thank you for showing us around your yard. And this is my distinct pleasure to be on Oklahoma Gardening with Sue Gray. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Well, it has been our pleasure bringing you this show today all about Oklahoma roses. You want to keep in mind, if you want to learn more about them, you can stop by any OSU Extension office and pick up several of our fact sheets about growing roses in Oklahoma. And if you want to learn to prune them, Will Rogers Park in Oklahoma City offers a pruning demonstration all about roses for homeowners in March of every year. So contact them when that time comes. Well, just like the rose varieties such as this one named Unforgettable, we hope you won't forget to join us next week on Oklahoma Gardening.